Hi, this is Gilles, the Radio Prepper, with a new radio from Retevis today, the Alons HD2. And I have the Alons HD1. You know, I really don't review uh, handheld radios much anymore, except when uh, they really bring something new to the table or it's a really high quality model. If I did so, I'd be presenting a handheld uh, twice a week probably and you would really get tired of it. So now when a company wants to send me a radio, I usually say no. But when Retevis uh, told me they could send me an Alons HD2, yep, I said yes. They did send a radio to me, uh, I can keep it, but I am not paid for this review. If you haven't seen it yet, uh, look up my uh, the video that I did on the HD1. It's a really good radio and uh, the HD2 brings uh, a few features, a few extra features that I think are really worth the upgrade. So we're going to see the uh, differences and uh, the reasons why I think the HD2 is a better radio because of a couple features that I think I really must have on a radio, a modern radio today, especially for prepping. As you can see here, they are extremely similar. Not much difference between the two, especially seen from uh, the front. Now, if you look in the back, that's different because the HD2 has a USB-C port. And this is one of the two features that I think now must be on all radios because this allows you to actually charge your radio with a small solar panel with a 5 volt USB uh, output. Also different from the HD1, we now have a red or orange button here which is an alarm button. Now that makes me think of the uh, Bofeng. <laughs> UV5R, but uh, yeah, so useful or not, I'm not sure, but I guess uh, if you're not able to speak or, uh, you know, you, uh, you just have uh, a second to press the button before passing out, that can be useful. The other features, you can't see them from looking at the radio from the outside, but listen to this, it has Bluetooth. And that's amazing because I've been asking for Bluetooth, you know, connectivity in radios for a long time. I always wondered why nobody had done that before and Retevis just did. So it comes with an earpiece. Uh, of course, I already lost it. I don't know where it is. I'm in the process of revamping my apartment. So or actually getting rid of the clutter. And uh, you can pair it though with any uh, Bluetooth device and I just paired it with my headset here that I use for my computer and it works perfectly fine. Now that has a big advantage because you can attach this radio on a mast, 10 meter mast or hoist it you know up a tree branch and you will extend your range a great deal and still have connectivity with the Bluetooth headset and using the Vox to uh, trigger the transmit. And that's pretty darn cool. So those two features, the USB-C charging and the Bluetooth, to me, that's those are two reasons uh, to, to buy the HD2 instead of the HD1, or even replace your HD1 with the HD2, and then you'll have two of them. Uh, it has the, this one has the GPS, so uh, GPS is an option. And uh, it's uh, IP67, just like the uh, HD1, so waterproof, dustproof. And, you know, for prepping uh, prepping radio, you really uh, need that. I mean, I, I wouldn't consider a radio as a prepping radio if it doesn't have, if it's not waterproof. Now, the problem I had with the HD1 is that uh, you could barely see the screen in daylight. And sometimes with a bright sun, you couldn't see the screen at all. Now the HD2 has the same screen, uh, somewhat unfortunately. I'm not a big fan of screens uh, anyway, but uh, it has a night mode and you can see it here. And I've found that the night mode actually is a little bit more visible. Still, uh, you know, color screen, I'm not a big fan, but you know, today, I mean, that's what you get. And you might have to, you know, just look at the radio like this to see the screen, but it's not so much of a big deal. I, it just bugs me, but you know, in all practicality, it's not a big problem. The radio is of course analog 
and digital DMR, uh, which is a now you know recognized by everyone uh, protocol. So I much prefer to have DMR radio instead of uh, you know the Yesu or the uh, the ICOM systems, which are uh, proprietary. So just nobody else can use them, and you have to buy an extremely expensive radio to have a digital mode. Not so much with this one because it's DMR and everybody can do DMR. Output power is 5 watts. Now, if you look at the brochure, uh, the specifications or the, uh, well, if you go to the website, it's not printed. And I think it's great because honestly, uh, output power is the last thing you should check uh, when buying a radio because it really doesn't matter. Whether it's 5 watts, 3 watts, 10 watts, it's not going to make much of a difference. What's going to make much of a difference is your height and line of sight if there are no obstacles between you and the other station. The GPS model has uh, AES-256 encryption and the radio can store 3000 contacts. That's a lot. Unfortunately, the software is still not available for the Mac uh, and I actually don't know any radio manufacturer that makes a software for the Mac. Uh, if you know of one, let me know. The uh, receive frequencies are 136 to 174 MHz and UHF uh, 400 to 520 MHz. Operating temperature minus 10 to plus 40 degrees. Uh, that's, uh, yeah, that's pretty much my operating temperature. So the uh, USA version, if it's set to the USA version, uh, you have uh, different frequencies that you get 220 to 225 megahertz on top of uh, VHF and UHF. If your radio is set to uh, zone 2 for the US, uh, you will also get the NOAA channels uh, for weather information. You have uh, four power levels. You have high, middle, low, ultra low power. So I think it's 541 and uh, 500 milliwatts. Transmit current in analog is 1.6 amps and digital uh, 0 0.9. I'm surprised that digital actually consumes less current. That's weird. Now, the uh, transmit frequencies are limited to uh, the amateur bands, but of course you can unlock it. And there are plenty of videos on YouTube that explain how to do that. The programming cable seems to be identical to the HD one. The software you can find on the Retevis website or alons.com. And uh, first we are going to check if the port is correct. So for me, it should be port four. Now, if you're not sure, you can plug in the programming cable with the radio and uh, see if a new COM port uh, pops up. So that's fine. And now I'm going to do download from the radio. I'm reading uh, data from the radio. Now we should have all the information we need here. There are a few things that you need to check. First, make sure that you set up the ID in your radio. My ID number is 2089167. I could have put ham for the name, I guess. I also made one up, 1000, which I might use for the uh, PMR channels, um, just in case. All right, so the first setting that we have to set <laughs> is the uh, contacts and priority contacts. Now you see that I have a few here already. I have group calls and private calls. Private calls are for people basically. So they have a number that has been assigned to them like mine. And you have group call, which is for repeaters uh, talk groups. Now I have this one, 06. That's the number of my department, Alp Maritime. And it has the number 20806. 208 stands for France and 06 for the uh, department number. Now, the ones you want to add if you don't have any already is uh, TG99 and TG9. So that's 99 and 9. Those are for local groups. Lots of repeaters have local talk groups and those are the two uh, talk groups that you need to add. I have uh, one from the north of France here and uh, I have another one for Italy. One, one repeater in Italy here. So make sure you have at least one 
group call for repeaters and you have to check what's available in your region uh, on the repeaters. Oh, it's done for that. Now zone information, you need zones and uh, here I have three zones, the uh, south, all the channels are here. I could add more here by clicking and switching them over with the arrow. Uh, I have PMR, is the equivalent here in France to the FRS in the US. And I have uh, 16, 17 channels here. And I have C, which are the uh, maritime channels. I only have two for now, and I might add more for later. So you can group your channels basically into zones, uh, geographical zones, and that's pretty cool. Then you need to set up the channels. And now that we have the zones and contacts, and I have imported that from uh, the file that I had for my HD1. I'm going to show you how a digital channel looks like. So of course you have to specify that it is a digital channel. TX power high, timeout timer two minutes, Vox level I leave it at one, and this is the name of the mountain the repeater is on. RX frequency is the one given by the repeater as the TX frequency because it's the frequency the repeater is transmitting on and that's the frequency of course that you are receiving. Then you have TX frequency, that's the frequency that I am transmitting and that would be the RX frequency on the repeater. Here you have to make sure that you uh, choose uh, work mode uh, repeat since it's not simplex, it's uh, repeater. Slot 2, that's given to me by the uh, repeater uh, web page. ID setting, that's my ID, so uh, I'm not going to put 1000 here because of course uh, uh, it's a ham radio uh, repeater, so I give my ham radio DMR uh, ID. Color code 1, same thing, the repeater will give you that, you don't have to, uh, to guess. TX authority always, that I left uh, as is basically. Uh, there is a way to uh, kill the radio basically but that's that doesn't concern us it's more for uh, commercial applications. That's for analog so I'm not touching that it's, everything is grayed out anyway. GPS I clicked on yes for, for those three boxes. Uh, I didn't click to send uh, reports uh, you know every uh, so many seconds not necessary and I didn't change anything here and that's it that's all you need basically everything is here it may seem complicated at first but once you have the right information specifically of course the frequency and uh, the uh, slot the time slot and the color code you have to make sure you assign uh, in your contacts priority contacts the correct uh, talk group and that's given to you by the repeater as well. And now I'm going to uh, send that to the radio. It's pretty slow but fortunately you don't have to do that very often. So I'm on my boat today, <laughs> brought the uh, HD2 and it's a bit rainy so um, if I wanted to really make a contact or call someone I probably would like to uh, prefer to do it from inside the cabin so I'm going to actually take this, use the, the Bluetooth to hoist it up the mast, gain some height, hence some range, and call my friend Marco, F40XR. I'm going to use these uh, headphones with uh, Bluetooth. It has a microphone, so I know uh, the, uh, the headphones work. The microphone I haven't tested, but uh, we'll check that out. For the Vox, I have to. I programmed uh, this uh, button here. I'm gonna click on it, a long press. See what I mean by uh, the screen not really visible in daylight. Uh, it's kind of a dark day and still. And the Vox, uh, well, I have to turn it on. The Vox uh, works for the, uh, the sound doesn't seem to work for the microphone so maybe I'm missing something here. Well I had a good plan I was gonna put the radio in this uh, bag and hoist it up but uh, 
it looks like the Vox doesn't trigger with my headset. Maybe it's maybe it's because of that specific headset. If anyone knows if the microphone works uh, with Bluetooth, please uh, let us know. Apparently the squelch doesn't work on uh, analog channels. And I hear Marco, but barely. Ask him to call him in uh, on Montchauve DMR in one minute. All right, let's see if uh, he calls and uh, see if I can hear him. Not sure he can reach the, the repeater, so we'll see. Oui, Marco, bien reçu. Est-ce que tu me reçois? All right, works uh, really well. Oui, euh, QSL Marco, hein, merci. Hein. Bah, impeccable, hein, comme ça, euh, je peux montrer que, que la radio fonctionne. Hein. <rire> Par contre, j'ai pas le, le squelch ne marche pas sur les canaux analogues. Là, il faut que je trouve le, je trouve la raison. Ça doit être dans les menus, sans doute. Hein. Donc euh, voilà, bah, écoute, tu verras la vidéo. Hein. À toi de F4 euh, Whisky, bravo Yankee. Oui, quatre aussi, bon, il y a un petit quatre dans le groupe qui serait Romeo, Marc, euh, oui, tu, là tu trafiques avec quel poste, euh, Gilbert Alors là, c'est le Aylands HD2. J'avais testé le HD1 il y a déjà un bon bout de temps, et là je teste le HD2. Aylands, euh, QSL All right, so now it's really raining, <laughs> and uh, I uh, went back inside the cabin. The Vox uh, did not work, but it's probably a setting because, of course, why would they not include the microphone in the Vox function? Uh, but uh, I tried without Bluetooth and uh, the Vox uh, still doesn't work. So I'm sure it's something that I did wrong uh, or I forgot or I missed a setting somewhere. Now, uh, I should have checked that before leaving. <laughs> but, you know, Ritavis uh, gave me a short time to make this video, unfortunately. And uh, so I had to do uh, a little too fast uh, for my taste. And I didn't have time to really, really uh, go in depth into the radio. Consider this a first contact, a, a first presentation of the radio. And I will uh, use it, of course, later on another video, um, probably more than one, and figure out those issues, mainly the Vox and the squelch on analog channels. All right, so the radio works well. So, you know, except for those two things. But uh, again, that, that's, uh, that's on me. Uh, not surprised because, of course, the HD1 works really well. So why would the HD2 not work? So... I have no reservation about this radio so far. Um, we'll see uh, in other videos. Too bad I couldn't raise it up the mast and uh, and test it with the uh, the Bluetooth. But uh, I'm sure if I hadn't lost the earpiece, <laughs> that would probably work. I'm not sure. Maybe it's my headset. I don't know. I'll uh, I'll figure it out, guys. All right. Uh, I hope you liked it. And uh, until uh, the next one, have a good one.